Right, in today's episode of Testing the Tips, we're going to look at three simple steps that are going to improve three key areas of your driving stats. And that's going to be club head speed will increase, hopefully. You're going to drive the ball straighter than ever before. And hopefully, you're also going to drive the ball longer than ever before. So we're going to be using TrackMan. We're going to be concentrating on club head speed, our total distance, and visually, you're going to see how straight or not we decide to hit this golf ball with the three phases that we're going to look at. But if you're new to the channel, the first thing I'm going to ask you is to consider subscribing, hit the like button, and also pass comments on what you like perhaps about this video, but also what you might like to see in future content. Right, let's get driving and, and see how this one goes. Today's video was filmed at Chester and North Wales Golf Academy. Right, so today's video comes from Danny Maud. Yes, we're back there. His tuition is second to none on YouTube. And I will, of course, provide you a link to Danny's original video in case my interpretation isn't quite as accurate as you might want it to be. But this drill was also passed down from Pete Cowan to Danny Maud and then in the hands of the average golfer. And really what it looks at doing, that first of all, phase one is looking at Maintaining balance in the swing, I suppose, which ultimately will lead to a more consistent strike. And that's the first thing we're going to look at. Now, if like me, you've got a tendency to sway off the ball and then look to arrive back at the impact position with your timing spot on, then you'll know that can be a little bit hit and miss and it can have cause you a lot of problems. The other thing I tend to do is swing flat on the backswing and make a little bit of a, a move out so my sort of uh, my swing plane can often change throughout the swing, which again is inconsistent. So all these things, the drill we're going to look at in the first instance is going to perhaps eradicate them and you start to understand why these things are going wrong. So Danny goes on to explain that first of all, in our sort of ideal position, we've got the club head swinging through at what is a 45 degree angle and we are completing a nice uh, sort of balanced and consistent swing arc. None of those jerky movements that I've just referred to, none of those moving inside, moving back over the top. We're trying to stay on a consistent plane. Now swinging at this nice and slow speed, my swing looks absolutely perfect. Probably not from back on that camera, but how do we sort of build that consistency and understand where we're going wrong. Well, it's a very simple drill phase one, and one you can soon get your head round, and one that you've seen many times before, no doubt, but with a bit of a twist on it. And it's the, I will call it the feet together drill. I know I've tried it in the past. And to be fair, I think a lot of YouTube tuition is things that we've tried in the past, but we often forget the sort of positive impact that it had uh, on us when we tried it. So it's a good reminder to get back into this. So, driver in hand, mini driver in my case, feet together. The first thing you're gonna do is turn out your lead foot just a tad to open a stance and give you a little bit more wriggle room, if you like, because we're gonna now swing with our feet together. The idea is that this is just a very short swing and we're doing it at a very slow pace. Now, what will happen or potentially happen if you've got real problems with your balance and do have a lot of sway within your golf swing, the first time you try this, there's every chance you'll fall over. And it's a lot more difficult than perhaps it looks. So feet together, one of your, your lead foot slightly opened up a little bit, arms out in front of you. And what you're trying to do is maintain balance and maintain that swing arc, that swing plane on a nice consistent movement. So it's nice and smooth. If you're struggling with it, like I said, you're falling over, you're leaning forward, you're falling back, or again, you're swaying backwards, you'll soon, you just won't stand up in this position. And it'll highlight straight away an immediate problem. So what you're gonna do, like I said, is get into this position. The key point really that Danny also mentioned, I almost forgot there. With your head position, you're looking to get into your, um, your address position. Your head in front of a, uh, an imaginary brick wall. And that brick wall you want to stay attached to. So what you don't want to do is move your head backwards and you don't want to move it forwards either. You're trying to stay in a balanced position. Now then, 
I don't know how that looks from behind, but what I'm hoping is, I shouldn't have put that ball there so close to me. What I'm hoping is, is that we're just staying fairly stable and I'm not swaying back or forth and nor side to side. So what we're gonna do is get a ball back on that tee and I'm gonna attempt to hit the first shot in this exact position. Well, what do we manage? Okay, so we've got a club head speed of 77 mile an hour and we've got a total of 166, 176 yards that is. So straight away with a standing still tee position, a dress position rather, I've hit the ball 176 yards and more importantly down the middle of the fairway. So you're going to continue that drill and essentially all we're going to look to do is increase the speed to as much as we can in that feet together position I'm just going to see what I can get to in terms of club head speed, how it impacts the total distance and what it does to my well, ball speed and ultimately where this ball ends up down fairway. Before I hit the next shot, there was an element that I failed to mention and I don't really understand it to a degree and the whole idea of testing the tips is not for me to just purely um, tell you how good these tips are and how immediately we get success because that's not what reality is. Uh, they all need their practice, but I also need to say, well, you know, well, how did I interpret the video? Did it help me? Danny talks about the ball position and he talks about the ball position moving to in front of your lead foot, which is an unusual ball position. And again, I'm not really sure as to why that be the case, but we'll, we'll move it a lot further forward and we'll try that same swing again. Let's get that feet a little bit close together. What did we do there? I mean, it's great to get the control. 75, we slowed down a little bit on that. But what you'll notice is the improvement of strike. Well, the strike is very good with that club head speed. But maybe more importantly, what's noticeable is the fact that we're hitting the ball straight. I'm also delivering the club head fairly square. All these bits are not necessarily mentioned as being a benefit, but having that greater control, remaining on plane, and not sort of making any jerk movements is clearly helping with me downrange in terms of dispersion. That's incredible. Because yeah, I already knew that we increased. So a little bit more effort and we've just got a ball that's gone 200 yards down the middle of the fairway. And that was by putting some extra distance or length rather into the swing. And what I'm going to try and do and what the practice drill would be, would be to keep on increasing club head speed or length of swing until we start to lose control. Because as soon as we start over swinging, as soon as the start, head starts moving, we start lifting up, we're going to start falling over. So this is all about control and understanding um, how by maintaining that club on plane can have such a positive impact on straightness and in the end where we're going to next just how far we hit this ball so the next phase obviously is we're going to start to get that stance opened up a little but maintaining all the same principles so inevitably um, what's going to happen now is the minute we start to widen the stance all of our swing traits are going to probably creep in because the minute everything starts to get a little bit uh, extended that being the length of swing then issues are going to arise. So in the first instance, and we're still going to sort of turn the left toe out a little bit, we're going to give ourselves a little bit of room, and I'm going to go to sort of what I would consider to be um, the sort of address position that I might be width of stance for an iron shot. And that's the first shot I'm going to play. So I'm going to stay in fairly balanced, and what I'm going to try and do is concentrate on maintaining that plane. Now again, lots of control. Wow, so we're picking up, we're going 210. What you'll notice straight away when you do this drill, if you try this drill, is the control is ridiculous. Compared to what I would normally do, first of all in club head speed, I'm 10 mile an hour currently slower than perhaps where I'd be with, uh, with my full swing. 
But once I start to try and generate that club head speed, like I said, all the issues arise. So this is without doubt a great drill to, first of all, understanding tempo. If you start doing the full swing and you start to realize as things creeping back in, then start to work out, go back to feet together, go back to that situation where you're looking to keep the, uh, the, the club head on plane, on a consistent plane throughout the swing, and then go back and widen the stance again. So this is a drill that requires some work, some, some tweaking, but some basic understanding that uh, by stabilizing everything, it can have a massive impact on your performance and understanding where that club head is within your swing also has huge benefits. So hope that one uh, works for you. Give it a go. It's, uh, I can't imagine why you can't put this drill into, into your irons, into your hybrids, into your fairway woods. But for now, get out there with the driver, see what it does. We're carrying over 200 yards with what is effectively still only a half swing. But more importantly, we're hitting a ball down the middle and keeping control of that club head and club face. Right, hope you enjoyed that one. Don't forget, description down below for Danny's uh, no doubt better and more thorough explanation to how this can help your game. And for our channel, if, uh, if you would consider subscribing, we've had a positive feedback to say the least so far, and I will continue to post these every Friday night. And uh, with your support and feedback, it seems to be going very well. So as ever, thanks for watching and uh, good luck.